Okay, welcome to another episode of the Rugby League Outsiders podcast. I've been invited to uh, a quaint little place in the middle of nowhere, really, as I'm driving in. Um, but actually, it's, it's a nice place. Nice place. As I drove in, there was a little stream. Ducks fly, you know, floating around, and I thought, now that's freaking appropriate. Obviously, I'm here with the deep, the deep in ducks. Of- so we've got four lads. Uh, they're going to tell a little bit about their story and um, and we're going to learn a little bit more about this club that has created a lot of curiosity in the in the Midlands League this year. So welcome, lads. Thank you very much. Morning. Hello. Thank you. Um, all right. So the only place to start, really, and I don't know who wants to lead on this, is you know where did where did this club come from? How did it come about? Well, basically, um, a few years ago, me and Luke and our other friend Kieran, we've just always love rugby love union love league and we've always said for these years is why don't we come up with our own league team why don't we do something and it's just always been like a pipe dream sort of thing for us but then um, Deep in Ducks the actual name itself we've had since day one it was always Deep in Ducks we knew it had to be Deep in Ducks and that was Whitby who came up with that Dragons was too intimidating Um, so we all play union together at Deep in's rugby club Um, so then the natural transition deep in duck uh, rugby league team and yeah well we've been, we've been playing at boston for a few years and we've even had our own little group chat to sort of get lifts up and down from there and even that's been called deep in ducks for the last yeah. two three seasons yeah so but it, there's a reason as well because there's the d so obviously our minis here for the union side is deep in dragons right our vets team is deep in dinosaurs so it, it was natural to use a d so we went for ducks but also there is a famous duck race in the village. Yeah. Oh, we that? do have as well one, so. once a year though it's thousands of ducks as well so you're on about that stream that you see that yeah yeah so down the river is the uh, deep in stuck race and everybody comes around sponsors a duck and they will just get put in don't they and then there's winners well I tell you so when they released the names for the two different leagues your, your name obviously stood out and we straight away started getting a message saying where the fuck is deep in <laughs> <laughs> and who the fuck are these ducks you know we were like I don't know and I can guarantee there were 20, 30 people if not more all on Google trying to find out a little bit more about deep in ducks did you expect the name to, to have that kind of effect or well, yeah of course we did <laughs> no, top plan no, no I, I reckon it was uh, it's come as a bit of a surprise I think it was always exciting for us but I don't know if we thought it would be sort of blowing up like that and yeah. people getting really interested yeah. Yeah. for us it's, we love rugby and that's what was the main the main thing was, was the main goal wasn't it I think it was a bit of fun as well we kind of you'd crack up and you have probably seen from some posts we're, we're nicking some lines from like the Mighty Ducks yeah, yeah. and just yeah. duck quotes and you know as a dad I've got a, a pile of dad jokes including ducks so it kind of just come a bit natural <laughs> but um, yeah I can't believe the you know just the success of it kind of thing and how it's grown up so at what stage now would you say the, the club is uh, obviously before we kind of press record and all that kind of stuff you're talking about training dates if there's anybody that's local here thinking you know what I want to give rugby league a try and, and maybe this is yeah. this is for me you're like kind of where, where we are I think that that's the biggest thing for us as a club is that we are right in the middle of a union hotbed yeah. so there's 10, 12, 15 union clubs all within 30 minutes, 45 minutes. I played a lot of league growing up. I was down in Hertfordshire, so I, was, I used to drive 45 minutes to Hemel Hempstead to play for Hemel Stags. So I, I don't think the distance is an issue. So what we want to do is to give people who are union players at their core, who want to get fit, who want to have the chance to try league, to, to come here. So I think it's right now, we're going to be starting pre-season beginning of April. We're looking to then start playing games kind of mid-May, end of May, and then get have a, the first few games this year, see where we do. But what we're kind of looking for is one or two players from each local club will see us have a massive squad, a strong squad, and then, you know, do decent in the Merit League and, and then yeah. look where we can go from there. So is there something more strategic behind the team or is it literally just a load of lads that played league and want to give it a crack? Or do you think it's going to be good for the union club that's based here I've, or what? It's going to be incredible for the union club that's based here. Of course it is. We're going to attract players. Um, but the thing is, we are first season, well, as you'd say, it's a development season. Of course, it's going to be. It's our first year established as a club. But we are here to take it seriously. And we're not just here as another number. As, fu- as much as fun as we're going to have along the way, we are here to take it serious and not 
make a mockery of the sport. We want to do it properly. Yeah. And it, there are as well, there, there's a lot of big towns in the area. And the, so the closest club, like these lads are saying, is Boston Buccaneers, and they have to travel 40, 45 minutes to get there each way. And it's the further east to where we are. So we're now more in the middle, closer to these bigger towns. Yeah. So strategically, short term, get a couple of players from each club in the next few years as all these other towns start to take notice and all these lads hopefully and ladies maybe in the future who want to start playing have got the chance to start moving to a, a more centrally located club that's more accessible as well for other teams travelling to us. Yeah, you mentioned before we started recording that you, you're, you're chairperson, we should say really, he's done a lot behind the scenes, I mean what, what kind of obstacles have, have they faced you know, what, what kind of oh, things have they gone yeah, through? Yeah I wouldn't say it's obstacles but when we, <coughs> we approached Lindsay Fowler who's our chairman here, she, when we approached her about the idea, um, she, she you know, she supported it and said yeah, let's, why not and uh, I think she you know, went on these webinars, she's spoken with the league, she's made sure we've done everything correctly in the background. So really with her we wouldn't have got this list of fixtures. 100%. You know, we you know, so hats off to her and you know, we're very, very thankful to her to do all that um, sort of paperwork in the background. Thing with Lindsay, she's in absolute support of this club, one hundred and ten percent. So anything she can do, isn't it? Anything new ideas, anything we can bring to this club she'll back she'll back that person and she'll back whatever movement we've got going so what's the role in the in the union set up then does she have a role in the union set up well yeah she's um she's our chairman for oh, the right. club. Okay, she's our so, union yeah. club chairman um or chairperson and uh, she's obviously still playing with the devils which is our female team another yeah. d appropriate name yeah yeah double d's double the d's yeah <laughs> no it's great i mean in the summer just to kind of paint a picture so Another club that sprouted up last year, Staffordshire Quantums, right? They said that it was a, it was amazing for their union club because it hit the summer, the club was dead. Everybody went off and played cricket or whatever, you know what I mean? And they took no revenue, but there was still costs going out. Is, do you see that being the similar kind of thing here? Definitely. I mean, I've, I've been on, on the talks and, and it, one of the main drives is to keep rugby playing at the club and keep it live and keep, you know, this clubhouse thriving, hopefully during them, you know, quiet months. Mm. Uh, so we have to give these ideas and opportunity and to grow and uh, I'm, you know I'm really excited by it I think it's going to be really successful so there's a, there's a couple of you well most of you have got the, the Boston Buccaneers uh, tops on obviously that's a little nod to where this club originated from so uh, have you got any comments to those you know I've just got to give them a massive shout out for giving us this initial boost really yeah no no Mark Jim Martin oh god the name the names go on yeah um they just looked after us from day one. They took us under their uh, their wing, taught us everything they knew about rugby league. Is, is that the first duck pun we've had? <laughs> I thought it was like, Natural comes natural. Took under the wing, yeah. That's quacking. <laughs> <laughs> Here they come. <laughs> yeah, they've, they've, they've looked after us from day one. Um, yeah, so like, uh, Jim, fantastic coach, uh, got a lot of patience, and um, yeah, we've been travelling up there, and they've given us so much, so much time. We've had lads turn up on game days that never played before and they're again they're getting hold of them and by scruff of the neck and get them stuck into the game which has been absolutely fantastic the yeah. set the setup they've got over there is second to none as well um it's absolutely yeah, it's amazing inspiring. facilities yeah. over there it's certainly inspired us and i think you know credit to them they've t 10 years this year isn't it and yeah. i think yeah. to boston so credit to all of the guys there it's a fantastic club and you know so as a as a fledgling club see what i did yeah uh, <laughs> What are you excited about in the next next few weeks, next couple of months or whatever? Me personally, it's welcoming new people to this club, introducing them to the boys that I already know and the personalities we've got at this club and just starting something. The beginning is I really feel like this is the beginning of something and the likes of like we had the discussion before, uh, with with league it's a different level of what you can actually unlock and achieve and there's so much opportunity that we've got here that I'm just excited for the next few years what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <Get> Stop. <laughs> One Have job. a beer, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the beer pumps are cheer and quiet. <laughs> I just want to... Let's go again. Yeah. Uh, I just want to come over to you and, and talk a little bit about... The, I mean, the brand is, is strong, isn't it? You know, and like you say, you've taken a bit of inspiration from the mighty... Best way for that to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a big coffee. <laughs> Yeah, how big is this bloody coffee? It's <laughs> ordered the whole pot. But yeah, I just want to obviously you're, yeah. you're sort of fronting up the, the branding and everything now. And obviously, yeah, I think once we 
we were conscious about making sure we got a, approval really before we started pushing it and we got approval from the league and then we were you know entered into the merit league we got the fixtures so the idea was to do a bit of a teaser campaign and just you know have our logo have a few quotes base it around ducks try and you know tease people in to, you know, to find out what they want and then obviously on the back end of that from your podcast the other week it's kind of we've had to move a bit more quickly with it so it's brilliant um, and again it's just to put you know deep in rug, rugby club in general on, on the map here locally for, for everybody else so hopefully these posts will be seen and draw in people from you know all walks of life kind of thing because it's it is a good club we've got you know I'm quite old now but you know, camaraderie between the youngsters in the team and the old lot. You know, we're all kind of brothers, so it's, it's pretty good. How would you, how would you lads, sort of, you know, look around the table now, just a little bit of a fun. If you had a couple of words to describe each each person, like what what would those words be? Quackers. <laughs> hey. 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 There we go. <laughs> Diversity. <laughs> uh, I think you've got a uh, Lynchy. I think is our. Not headless chickens, not the wrong is the wrong word, <laughs> but he fearless, fearless, yeah. fearless. That's that's the right word for it, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm yeah. just loud. Yeah, George is just loud. Motor right <laughs> mouth. <clears throat> I but, think we're all passionate, aren't we? I think um, passionate about rugby, passionate about the t- sport in general. You know, this sport and just spreading it. I think um, you see that we, you know, we've struggled as a team. We've struggled recently with for numbers, but we're we're still here pushing to try and get numbers down here whether it's league whether it's union you know just to you know share that camaraderie we have with others and and hopefully you know spread you know spread goodness yeah so let's let's fast forward two or three years where would you see like if you think right okay we've been a we've 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 smashed our goals or whatever where where do you kind of see yourselves there have you not have you not thought that far ahead really i think a, a realistic goal would be to be regularly competing at the top of the midlands Structured Full league, league. Yeah. structured league. Yeah, um, it would be nice to to move on from there. But I think that's the that's the goal that we should set for now. Go from there. I like I said I, the, because of the area we're in, because of the clubs we have around us, there is a real chance to have, you know, 10, 10, 20, 30 players from different clubs come in every week. We've got a good core here at the moment. So the, the, these lads have mentioned about going up to Boston. They normally take eight, ten every week. So we've already got the core of a team. So the chance to have all these other players coming in, having a good, thriving first team, and then potentially a second team to play in the Merit League that we will hopefully be moving out for in, in four or five years would be would be a really good way to, to focus on, I think. And is there, in that, that core eight players, are there any of them that you're really excited to see them play? We have got... Um, we've got quite a... F- like, well, I say diversity we have got a very diverse team and the players that we've got amongst those so we've got a young lad called Matthew Tapley he uh, he just turned 18 he um, he did originally play for Deepin's rugby club then moved over to Peterborough first team his first game what was it four tries he scored he's a winger he's quick as they come and uh, plays the upper- <laughs> um, so the like, likes of bringing Tapley back and getting him on the league roster it'll be incredible uh, we've got the likes of Chris Jones Jonesy can only because he's oh, I shouldn't say what his job is but <laughs> it's it not work, dodgy it, it won't no, um, it works shifts so it could, yeah. it's good to get him involved um, when he can he, yeah he can't make it up to Boston and he's just an absolute powerhouse as long as well as our mate Pierce Pierce an absolute powerhouse so getting those come in to play with us full time the likes of them plus we've got um, it's going to be incredible we've got a group of young Colts coming through who like Whitby helped coach them um, you know they're quite some exciting players there we've got young Gabe who's just fearless for a youngster Alex who's just taken to first team rugby really really you know really positively so that's exciting in itself and to keep them hopefully hungry and playing rugby through the summer will just you know benefit them as people and you know I think we, we've, sp- we've spoke a lot on the podcast before about you know you can't just have a standalone team you, you've got to start creating a club to have some kind of sustainability and all that it's incredible that you know we've, we've not even kicked a ball yet passed the ball whatever and and You've, you've got you know the, the makings of a cult team and you know one hundred percent yeah one hundred percent some of the cults that have come up for our union team this year they've put some of the first team players who have been here for years they put us to shame um, haven't they yeah. and it's uh, 
yeah it's, it's very great. exciting very exciting to see what we've we've got coming in the next couple of years so outside of your, your core of eight eight players that you've you know you've, you've got together what's the general like consensus of rugby league in this area is it is it well known or is it not i think there's a there's a lot of passion for it. If you if you talk to the teams in the area and you say, oh yeah, I play a bit of rugby league, the, the lads will go, oh yeah, I'd love to give that a go. And you go, oh, it's about an hour, an hour away to go and train. And suddenly that um, that enthusiasm seems to fade a little bit, but there's definitely a passion for it. Um, yeah, like I said, there's plenty of teams that want to play. So uh, yeah, it's onwards and upwards, I think. Sorry, our fearless leader for rugby union has just walked through the door. <laughs> Is everybody fearless round here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Is he ordering a coffee? So talk to me a little bit about like a bit of history, you know, some of the players you pulled through the deep in Union Club. Well, we've got um, Harry Wells, who came through our, our minis section. We've got an England shirt up there signed by him. And um, we had a, a young... Um, Devil, who went through to play for England. Katie Travar. Katie Travar, as well. So, um, so she's now at L- Loughborough Lightning, is it? So yeah. So we've, Tigers. And Tigers, uh, obviously. Um, so yeah. So they, you know, they've come through our youth system, played, played here, and uh, um, and our seniors. So that's quite We've nice. also got our Lynchy, who did play for <laughs> Ireland Vets this year. Oh, did you? <laughs> oh yeah, but that's wooden spoon. That's just charity, <laughs> charity game. I do a lot of work for charity, mate. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't like talk about it. it. But um, okay. yeah, no, I mean, that's just uh, wooden spoon. It's just quite um, passionate about. They they organise games, raise money for charities up and down the country. So uh, I had to. Yeah, yeah, I played, I represented in Ireland for them, which was excellent. A bit of heritage already? Yeah. So in terms of, like, social media and that kind of stuff, obviously, I, I know you've got a bit of social profiles going there. Web, is there a website on its way? Is it live now? or No, there's not. We, we're looking at the website um, at the minute. Yeah, we're just working out how what's what's the best way to, to approach that. But at the minute, it's Facebook, um, and then we'll just you know we'll share more information on that over the next couple of weeks. We'll probably need to move a little quicker on that now because uh, we've as you know you have all said there's a lot of people asking questions. So, but yeah, for the short term, come visit us on Facebook and and we'll take it from there. Well, the best thing is as well is um, what Carl your co-host has put me in a group chat with all the other Midlands uh, teams and I've had messages off them and they've been like anything we can do to help you so I've asked them all for advice of how to start off with things like your website and how they went about recruiting players and all of those have been absolutely incredible giving us some hot tips already so um, we'll be using some of those in the coming months weeks I suppose days how close we are to uh, actually starting. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to pull a finger out after this meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so obviously today you're leaving here shortly, and then you're going. Are you all playing today? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we've got a game yeah. up at rugby. Yeah, it's just been cancelled. Oh, you're joking. Has it been cancelled? Oh, okay. Well, we did have a game at well, we did have a game at rugby Welsh. That's why I didn't want to jump in. No. No. <laughs> there, there is a bar about ten meters away, though, so I'm sure we can. That's where I'm going to drown my sorrows. <laughs> yeah. Was it just oh, frozen? Yeah, he's, uh, yeah. He's, his glass is usually half full, but today your glass is <laughs> half empty. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's another, that's another thing about this club. Um, <laughs> this cl- joke, I'm joke. This, this club's vets team. Um, I've got to give a shout out to them because there's, I don't know how many of them, it's, it must be in the 40s, surely, yeah, of how many of those show up for training as well. Um, there's not a vets club probably in the East Mids like these guys here. Um, they're absolutely incredible. All of them go on a tour once a year. The camaraderie there is second to none and something to be inspired for. Like, that, it's awesome what they've got going. There's, it's easy, you know, we've, talked, we've got union uh, games getting cancelled, frozen pitches and all that kind of stuff. It's easy to see the, the lure of summer rugby, isn't it, really? Um, you know, what aspect, what other aspects Ooh. of rugby league do you find quite exciting and you're looking forward to getting getting amongst? I think a big one this last year for union players is the rule changes around tackling yeah. and carrying the ball. So historically, especially for a lot of the bigger lads who like to like the contact, like to take the ball into contact, the tackle heights have changed, your angle that you approach the tackle's changed. Whereas in league, I think the latest talk is it's not allowed to be, it's shoulder height and down, yeah, which um, no one yeah. tackles that run there anyway, you know, to yeah. take a head off. So the opportunity for people to be able to have that physicality 
local clubs in the area, you'll have big blokes will be frustrated that they can't do that anymore. Have you have you felt them rule changes as a, as a union club like? Do you, do you yeah? Do you you know do you feel it on the on the pitch? There's a lot the more penalties for high tackles now. Yeah, I think, I think um, and I got pinged the weekend for dipping just before contact, yeah. so which was the first for me. But um, yeah, I, 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 to be honest, I think it's all about technique and coaching. Like we all coached youngsters here, um, so we always coach to tackle low but in the in you know the midst of battle it's hard to yeah. you know make sure you're doing it right but I think I think it's improved the last few games yeah. for us certainly with the tackle, tackle lights but it's more against us now so it's got going in our favour a little bit yeah anything else that you're looking forward to in regards to league as well, a game I just love the speed yeah uh, it's addictive <laughs> Oh yeah, that's me, Mr. Speed. <laughs> <laughs> the, the first, you run like you're in custard kid, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The first ten minutes of a rugby league game, when you, you're trotting back ten meters, I'm going, God, I'm never going to do eighty minutes. And then suddenly eighty minutes is up, and you're like, Oh my God, I've, I've somehow survived. That. Yeah, it's, there's a massive adrenaline thing to it. It is, it's incredible. But I will say one thing: if anybody is built like me and is worried about the pace of rugby league. Don't don't have no fear because everything is not as fast as it looks straight on the pitch. And they're in league. There's a it's very tactical in the fact of when you are going to get the ball, who's gonna, who's going to be doing what, and you don't need to worry about being bigger. There's a place it's for taller. everyone. There is a place for. Is, everyone. is that a, is that a genuine concern? Is it for like for some? Yeah. Oh, it was bigger for me. It was for me when I started. Oh, really? I first, yeah. I was really keen to get involved at uh, Luke, and, and at that time it was Luke and Keir when it playing uh, over at Boston. So I just wanted to continue playing in the summer. Um, and as um, Luke said earlier, you know, you go over there and they just welcome you you know Mark and, and Jim and it didn't matter how slow you were or yeah. you know how long it took you to pick it pick it up but they, they were just you know very patient with you um, it certainly worried me but once you're in the game you, you don't notice it because you've you know you've got, you've got your teammates around you who are eager to run and I think the other issue is the only league you see particularly in this area is what you see on TV yeah, yeah. yeah and when yeah. you watch the professionals do it obviously <laughs> it's really really quick and it's yeah. not like that when you it's a little bit slower when you play at a club level so yeah. uh, it's a lot more accessible than people seem to think so mm. one of the big carryovers I think that's part of the reason that we've got such good support from the uh, Lindsay the chairperson is that the fitness so playing go playing from union all winter whether you're a prop a front row forward or you're a winger it's slow you're stuck in the mud sometimes you might not touch a ball all game and then you come to league and all of a sudden you've got the chance to touch a ball 10, 15, 20 times yeah. a game you're always running and it gives players the chance to if they want to stay core union players that's absolutely fine come and play league for a few months your fitness will rock it your basic skills will rock it and you go back to union a different player and then every summer that you come back you'll get a little bit better a little bit better but the caveat on that is I've, I've never known anyone who's played league and union and preferred union after yeah. they played well yeah. I know yeah it's one of those un, unsaid unspoken things some, you know sometimes some union clubs we've experienced that they, they, they want they, they can they can they understand all them carryovers uh, can I come on speak carryovers <laughs> and all the benefits but then they're worried that they're going to hand a player over to rugby league in the summer they're going to get beaten up and bashed up on hard pitches you know fast game and all that kind of stuff have you, have you thought about how you can kind of put these union clubs mind at ease in regards to player welfare and stuff I think in terms of training like we said we're going to be training once a week to start with so it's not going to be we're not going to be running people into the ground yeah. to start with it's going to be giving people a chance to try the game to understand if they like it or not if they feel that they could play the game or not um, and then give just people the opportunity to try it out the games first year again will be uh, there won't be too many because it's going to be the Merit League we'll be arranging them ourselves rather than in a structured league format Um but I mean, ultimately, the goal for us as a team is to is to poach players. We want to turn this into a league team. Yeah. So if clubs from around the area come and play league and say we want to, we prefer league, then we want them to be thinking all through the union season. You know, middle of November when they've got their hands down their shorts because they're freezing cold, yeah. they haven't touched the ball for twenty minutes, or at the bottom of a ruck with ten people on top of them. With they're his hands waiting. down someone else's shorts. <laughs> someone else's shorts. Yeah, <laughs> they're just waiting for June to come round when they can come and they can yeah. play league on in the sun but, and I think equally it's like you know you could have players on the cusp of a team mm. somewhere locally who are not quite getting the game time they come over here they get to know the lads and then come you know play the summer come winter 
they might come and join us. They might yeah. come and you know, they might fill numbers where we 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 need them as well and positions that we need. So hopefully it's positive for you know both. Yeah. Both yeah. Did yeah, you definitely. guys get annoyed when you went back to Union and people yeah. were offside? Yeah. It's totally. like I've been running about ten meters. <laughs> well, at, at Merrily it's yeah. probably about no, eight, eight. a rough eight. <laughs> but when someone no, can't take a step back yeah, a yeah. meter and be onside, you're like, what are you doing? And then forgetting to let go of the player when you're on the floor. <laughs> All right. So obviously, you know, you're on the verge of getting, you know, launching the team and everything. What, what can other people that are perhaps watching this do to to help you? Well, a massive thing for us, obviously, coming into this brand new, we're looking for sponsorships. A uh, great thing about League is there's so much opportunity for sponsorships um, for all over the shirt, all over your trousers. Even if someone wants to sponsor the backside of my shorts, I'm happy to do that. We'll get the whole team doing it. Um, yeah, we're obviously new team. We need funding. So anything anybody could do to help us, local, not so local, we're all for it. Guinness, put this here, product placement. <laughs> if, you, if you want to sponsor us, we're all for it. <laughs> um, but yeah. I think another thing as well is, although we're focusing on the, the Midlands Merit League to start with, that if there's any clubs anywhere else in, in the south or we're, we're willing to venture into the dark yeah. north for, for a friendly, we're, we're willing to travel. If they can come to us, we'll do a two, two match fixture just to give everyone the chance to get the game time in, see the different areas, play these different places and, uh, and, and pick up the game and just get more games in the in the calendar. I think that's the main thing for us to yeah to yeah get definitely buy in. Okay, so anybody in part, that's part of the team or on the fringe of the team that deserves a special mention? Well, we've got Kieran Thompson. Oh, here we Luke, go. We both represented Midlands, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last year, which yeah, was a great that's achievement. That was. Yeah, that was a great achievement from that side. And then you can reel off some names. So these are the boys who we have <laughs> already on the uh, roster. On the shall roster. We say? Uh, so we've got like James Mason he's part of uh, the Deep Ends Club Josh Wheeler Kelvin he's going to be great in league for us this season he's previously played Boston uh, Lynchy Matthew Tapley who we mentioned earlier Pierce who we mentioned earlier uh, Archie Sawyer he's um Currently away, shall we say? Yeah. He's not in prison. He's, not, he's not in prison, but uh, <laughs> it would be good to see the likes of Ben Wall come back. Um, yeah, and then we got the likes of Kieran, Whitby, uh, myself, Lynchy, George, and then all the Colts that we're going to be bringing through. Yeah, it's going to be good. Well, lads, it's been awesome to I learn. Just say also, yeah. we've got our coach which is um, George as well let's not forget him because without him that's what I said I said George you didn't say he was our coach oh sorry well, George the spectacular right. coach <laughs> oh god let's, uh, let, let's have a little chat about the coaching then. so I mean yeah. talk to me about how, you, how is your coaching going to kind of start out and, and all that I'm going to be a hard ass. yeah <laughs> <laughs> you, you throw the bottle across the change rooms type of yeah, coach yeah Sir Alex Ferguson <laughs> yeah. I, I, um, so I, I played league was my main sport growing up so I grew up down south but always yeah. league was my preferred sport I played it at a, a decent level yeah. all the way through to of my mid twenties, and then work took over and that sort of stuff. But from my perspective, I think it's it gives people a chance to play a game that I believe is it suits so many more different types of people than than Union can. Union, it's very easy to specialise in one specific thing, whereas League gives everyone the chance to do it. So I think from my perspective, especially like with our Union lads, like when we because I'm the coach of the Deep and Union team as well, we focus on basic basic skills. Yeah. And in my opinion, if you can do the basics perfectly everything else will, will follow. So I just want to keep it simple, don't want to overcomplicate it, give everyone the chance to, to shine then once they can do the, the, the stuff, the, the basic bits. Yeah, amazing. Um, right, lads, we're going we're gonna to wrap it up. Uh, thanks for inviting us to Deepin. You know, it's been, you. it's been great coming across and chatting to you all. Uh, good luck for, the, for your, your maiden season and uh, no doubt we'll catch up throughout the season and, and see how you get on. Really interested in the, the kit launch. So. We'll have to have you down for the duck race as well. Yeah, the, yeah, duck, the race. duck race. We're yeah. there. We're there. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay, good effort, lads. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. That's the final whistle for this week's episode of the Rugby League Outsiders. We hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to follow us on social media and share this podcast with your friends. And as always, if you have a story to tell, a club to plug or a player that deserves recognition, we want to hear from you. So until next time on the Rugby League Outsiders, take care.